Hi everyone, my name is uh, Prasanna Murugesan. Today I'll be talking about uh, a Shiny application, patient profile Shiny application that we um, built on the enterprise level data visualization platform. Um, in this uh, data visualization platform, we have several open source tools and we are trying to see how we can use this open source tools to analyze clinical trial data. Uh, currently, this application is uh, used by several other functions. Um, they are part of the core clinical study team. And uh, we have some high-level details about the clinical trial. So in this patient profile application, we provide some key details about the clinical trial and then some summary-level information um, about vitals, AE, and labs. Uh, you can also categorize them by cohort. And we also provide patient level details for vitals, labs, and AEs. We also have a, a patient timeline. And in this timeline, you can look at the journey of the patient uh, during the course of the clinical trial, um, where we have con med, AE, medical history, and dosing information populated in a chronological fashion. Uh, you also have the ability to compare patient data uh, let's say you have three or four patients that you want to look at. Uh, you have the ability to select these four patients and look at uh, the data for these four, uh, four patients and compare them side by side. Um, as you can imagine, this is a, a pretty big uh, shiny application that we started to build. And uh, as we started to build the application, we realized the code is getting bigger and bigger. And we wanted to uh, find a way to manage it easily and we switched uh, to the modular programming technique where all the features that I explained we put them into individual modules and then we call it in the main program when there is a need for it. Uh, that way we were able to manage the programming uh, style and also we were able to collaborate better with other programmers, um, the programmers who were trying to contribute to the application. The packages we have used are Shiny, Tidyverse, uh, Shiny, Dashboard, Plotly, DT, and Crosstalk. And without any further delay, I will move on to the demo here. So this is the uh, home page of the application. Uh, as you can see, we are using dummy study data. And um, in the information boxes here, you are looking at the data extraction date, uh, number of patients dosed, the first enrollment date, male and female uh, gender distribution. The second row contains information about adverse events. And in the bar charts below, you are looking at enrollment by cohort, enrollment by race, enrollment by country, and then you're also uh, looking at a box plot for age and you're looking at the data points that's contributing to that uh, box plot. And here it's the bar chart for visit completion status. This basically tells you how far patients have been active on a clinical trial. So that information can be found here. So this is the dashboard view. Um, on the top left corner, you are having information about uh, the cohorts that are active on the study. So this serves as a global data filter. So you can uh, select the cohort of interest. And uh, as you can see, the all the data visualizations, you know, it reflects based on the uh, check boxes that we select here. The cohorts of interest will be immediately reflected in all the data visualizations. So the next one is the summary level details. Here you're looking at vitals. Um, in the vitals plot, we have uh, mean standard deviation and spaghetti plot combined together. So here you're looking at mean and standard deviation for all the selected cohorts. Um, as you can see, we have the feature of uh, you know, adding more information as you hover over a particular data point. And uh, so let's say if you're interested in a particular treatment. So I, let me say treatment three. And this is the mean and standard deviation for that particular treatment, which you can see here. And um, I want to see the data points that's contributing to that mean and standard deviation. I check the data points. And you can also see 
details about that uh, particular data point. So you're providing the patient number, the value, visit name, the expected and the actual visit date, all those details are present. Uh, we also have the ability to look at the trend of a particular patient. So let's say if this is the outlier and you're interested to see what is the trend of that patient, you can just click on that line and it's going to show you uh, the trend for that particular patient. You can also do the reverse if you have a patient number. Um, let me select a different color. You can look at the patient number in this drop down box and select that patient and that will highlight that particular patient, the trend for that particular patient here. The next one is the box plot. Um, again, you can deselect or select the cohorts of interest here and you can look at these individual data points and you can click on that particular data point to see what are all the values we have that for that particular patient. So this is for all the vital parameters. You can switch from one vital parameter to another vital parameter. Uh, the same concept is applied in the labs data set. We have the uh, mean standard deviation and spaghetti plot. Um, for the selected lab test, you're looking at albumin. But the one difference we have here is we wanted to compare more than one lab analyte at the same time. So you can see here, show two lab tests. When I click on it, um, you can see the mean and standard deviation for albumin and also for ALT in the same graph. You can also look at individual treatments, more data points, everything. You can customize it um, based on what you want to see uh, by checking or unchecking the legends uh, on the right hand side. The next one is the heat map. Uh, here we're looking at the lab grades um, you know, represented in different colors. So this gives you a view of what are all the lab grades reported on the clinical trial and it's easy to identify the higher grades just by looking at uh, the heat map here. The next one is adverse events tab. So here you're looking at um, all the AEs reported in, in, a, in a horizontal bar chart. So the future that we have here is when you when you want to know more details about this particular AE, you click on that particular bar and you have more details about that AE in the table below. So you can see if I click on headache, the table below reflects the, um, the AE that we selected, AE decode that we selected. We also have a pie chart, uh, which is also categorized by the severity. And the next one is the AE patient info. So this is so something like a data review tool specifically for AE. So if your team, the clinical study team, wants to look at a specific AE, they have the ability to select that and you can see the table below quickly changes to that AE that we select. You have the ability to select multiple AEs and the table will reflect that. You can look at AEs that started on a particular day and ended before a particular day. You can apply those filters. You can also uh, apply filters here and uh, you can further drill down on the data that you're looking at. So these are all these summary level view that we currently have. Um, the next one is the patient level view. In the patient level view, you can select up to 10 patients that you're interested in who you want to drill down further. So let's say I'm gonna select the first three patients here. And as I'm selecting it, you can see there are new tabs opening up on the right hand side, one for each patient. And each tabs contain information about that particular patient. So here you're looking at the subject ID, enrollment date, uh, placebo, exposure date, uh, age, sex, race, and other details. So here you're looking at the, the line plot for uh, diastolic, sorry, weight, heart rate, temperature, systolic, and diastolic pressure. And all these um, line plots have details about the patient, the visit, and all those details are added to the data points when you hover over those uh, data points. The next one is the lab chart. In the lab chart, we are comparing uh, two lab tests at the same time. You can turn off the second lab test just by unchecking this uh, checkbox here. And uh, you can move from one lab test to another lab test and just gives you ability to 
see what's happening in that patient for different lab analytes at the same time. The next one is the AE data. So this patient has four AEs reported. So this is pretty straightforward uh, horizontal bar graph that we have here. And the next one is the event timeline. So the event timeline provides you um, details about dosing, when the dosing happened, and then um, what are all the AEs that are reported with the start and end date information. Um, we also have the ability to add CONMETs and uh, we also have the ability to add medical history for that patient. So this tells you the story of the patient um, during the course of the clinical trial. And all these events are chronologically arranged, so it's easy for the end user to view and see what happened at different time points. So the next one is the compare future. So here you are looking at the three patients that we just selected, and you can see in the legend here. So just those three patients how are these vital parameters behaving uh, for those, just those three patients that we selected? The same concept for the lab data set. You know, we have ALB and ALT here. I'm just going to turn off the second lab parameter just to have a, a better view. So here you're looking at albumin for those three patients. You can deselect the, um, the individual patients or you can select them just so it appears back and gives you a better view of how the trend is. So that's the end of the presentation. So this is something that we built for the clinical study team. And uh, since the first release, we had several requests coming in. They wanted to add more features, which the team is currently working on. And we are looking forward to you know, put them in, um, in practice. And, um, and we are super happy to share this information with the community here. And looking forward to hear any feedback from the team members uh, to make this um, even better. Thank you.